Yeah, so, so uh, really the Finnish biobanking started in 2013 when we got the new Biobank Act as part of the national health growth strategy. Of course, we had had uh, uh, we, we had had the sample collections before, but but really the law made biobanking professional. It is based on three uh, principles: uh, pr professionality, including registration of biobanks, setting quality standards and SOPs, protection of donors' rights, including uh, informed consent, uh, pseudonymization of, of, of information, and, and the right to know what, what has been done uh, with the biobank samples and, and what are the results. But then uh, one, the third uh, cornerstone was uh, to create possibilities. So the consent is wide and allows use of samples uh, for multiple medical research purposes, of course, based on ethical approval, linkage of health data to the samples, possibility for recontacting, re which is separately asked in, in the consent, and public-private part partnership. And of course, one, one important uh, part of, of, of the legislation is that, is that any findings uh, created in research projects from biobank samples will be returned to biobanks for use in novel and uh, new projects. So after the legislation, uh, we have now 11 biobanks in all university hospitals. The, the uh, 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 DHL biobank for large cohorts, uh, the blood donors uh, biobank for healthy, healthy donors, and then a private biobank at Tervestalo. And, and we have an umbrella organization, FinBB, coordinating the biobank activities. After the law became effective, uh, the first thing was to transfer existing cohorts and pathology archives to the biobanks and then start uh, consenting on new individuals. And we have selected the all comers consenting, and I'll tell you why in, in the next slide. The, the other thing, activity that was started was uh, kind of a, a identification of ways to, to, to collect data so from medical resources, not of course only for biobanking activities, but, but the data lakes were created after. So, so uh, if one thinks of the definition of, of, of uh, personalized medicine. It is to give the right treatment to the right person at the right time. And this is, of course, a huge challenge. And, and, and this requires uh, much more data that we currently have. Data, uh, the biological information, but of course, phenotypic information from long, longitudinal uh, data sets that allow us to un understand how how, for instance, a genetic event uh, or alteration affects the, the outcome of the patient. And, and in order really to, 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 to advance personalized medicine, we it would be very challenging without healthcare integrated biobanks. And that was the reason why, why we started with, with content all comers instead of focusing of, of certain diseases so, so uh, the reason why, why many of the biobanks have, have been built within the healthcare infrastructure is to provide them flexibility for biobanking activities and to reduce barriers to return research findings to the benefit of patients. So we thought it is important that, that we have both the biological information and the phenotypic information at the same place and of course, the consenting as part of the healthcare work uh, is, 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 is not easy, but, but, but that allows us to, to collect uh, or, or consent uh, more patients that may other, could be otherwise possible. The production of raw data is done uh, sometimes at the biobanks, sometimes at the pre-search projects. And the phenotypic information is provided to the researchers via the biobank. Then, then of course, uh, we, we will have the 
returning data, the genotypes, clinical endpoints, novel biomarkers, etc. And at that point, it may be possible to, to already return information back, back to the sample donors or ask uh, the individuals for additional uh, uh, analysis, including novel omics analysis, or perhaps uh, provide a possibility for them in clinical trials. And then, uh, then uh, of course, in the end, uh, we hope that, that this approach will create uh, novel medical discoveries products, including diagnostics and novel treatments, and also impact assessments of any new new therapies. To, to be able to, to, to collect large number of samples effectively, uh, we have integrated both the consenting and, uh, and sample collection into, into the healthcare routine using existing resources, including the laboratory resources for, for this. Um, this makes uh, the sample collection streamlined and, and, and at some points accredited and affordable. And this is, of course, very important when, when we want to collect a large amount of samples. Another reason why we want to do this in, 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 in a large scale is that we feel that every patient has the right of being a research patient. And, and this, I think, is contrary to, 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 to the thoughts of many that, that uh, being or asking to be, become a research patient is a person is a burden to the individual. We, we feel that this would be the best possibility for, for our patients, for instance, to, to, to get the newest treatments or newest uh, drugs, perhaps in clinical trials. So uh, the, the collection has, has advanced uh, very nicely. And this is, this is true for all the biobanks across Finland. Uh, nowadays, we have close to 300,000 newly, newly collected samples, typically blood samples. But we are also starting novel collections, including uh, uh, fresh cancer tissue cohorts. And, and we are trying to accreditate the biobanking activities so that the same samples could be used both for, for uh, research and, and, and for clinical tests. For this, we have needed a good legislation, but that is not sufficient. We also need, need the support from, from many part parties in the healthcare and, and I, that is the reason I'm showing the picture on the right. This is the new CEO of, uh, of Helsinki University Hospital. The first day of uh, his uh, work at, at, uh, as the CAO, the first thing he did was to come to the biobank to, to provide a biobank sample. And that kind of examples create uh, not, uh, not only uh, uh, trust, to the, uh, to, the, to the public, but also raise the, the, the importance of biobanks in, 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 in the healthcare setting. So, so uh, of course, biology, genotypes and others are one thing, but in order to really appreciate their value, we need also the phenotypes. And for that, uh, all the university hospitals have created data lakes that collect and integrate data from different sources for further, further use, in, including secondary use under secondary legislation, but also, also use for biobank research. And, and we in Finland have, have a, a history of med electronic medical resource, re records dating back sometimes uh, for more than 20 years, but, but basically for all, for comprehensive electronic medical records now for 10 years. And, and this, this, um, these records can now be utilized based on the data lake uh, systems that, that, that we have uh, operating in, in all the university hospitals. Uh, so then, then uh, in order to really uh, make sure that 
that our biobanks act together an umbrella organization FIBB has been created by by the university hospitals and universities owning the biobanks and and uh, as one activity of uh, uh, FinBB is is uh, the one-stop shop called FinGenius, which uh, which uh, allows users of biobank potential users of biobank samples to search for potential uh, samples and associated data uh, from from a, a single single entry entry point and and the com combine samples from different biobanks. And this is, of course, very important. Also, also the technical details, including including uh, the the, the uh, contracts, is is taken care of by by the FinBB. And this is so. So actually, in Finland, we have a single biobank, although we have many regional biobanks. So so uh, what what are the activities of the biobanks right now. You will hear more of FinGen uh, uh, and ICANN in, 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 in the upcoming talks. I'm really glad that, that we, we have been instrumental for, for, for the infrastructure part of FinGen. On the other hand, that has ensured us that every sample that we collect is being used. That is kind of the, the nightmare of a biobanker that, that we collect samples, but they would not be used for, for projects. We are also supporting uh, the other uh, pillars of the health growth strategy, the cancer centers and, and neurocenter in their activities. But we also have uh, several projects carried out by researchers, by pharma companies, and, and some of them involve our own activities at the mm -hmm. biobanks. And I'll describe in one slide a project on, on the hereditary disease susceptibility and, and prevention, and, and, and also point out that, that there are several projects going on dia diagnostics of rare diseases, where we combine the data cl clinical information, genotyping information, and samples, either blood or, or um, tissue FFP derived and novel algorithms to identify candidates of uh, undiagnosed candidates of rare diseases and then use the samples to te test the, how, how the algorithms work. So, so one uh, activity uh, is, is uh, a proof of concept study to evaluate whether genotype results that we that are now returning to Biobank from fin from FinGen are applicable to clinical work. And, and so far we have focused on a, on a pilot case, which is PALB2 mutations. PALB2 is, is a gene uh, in, uh, of the same pathway as BRCA1 and BRCA2. Uh, and, and we have a founder mutation in Finland, which is relatively common, uh, one to 300 or one to 500. And, and it was recently shown that, that uh, this, there, there is a very high risk for these car carriers for, for breast cancer before uh, the age of 80. And that varies between 50 to 80%, uh, depending on the polygenic risk score. And, and the returning data returning to Biobank has demonstrated that, that there are carriers of various ages in, in, the, in the biobank donors. Uh, we tested the first batch of 10,000 patients, found 52 mutations or, or, or variant carriers, and then uh, using NGS technology, we verified uh, these findings and could demonstrate and that in, with, with, this, with this variant, uh, every uh, pathogenic variant identified by genotyping could be confirmed by, by diagnostic testing. So we are pretty sure that uh, un identifying these variants could, could be used for, for uh, further verification and, and then uh, further activities for, for these patients. 
And, and of course, this is not something that the biobank does uh, itself. It just serves as an enabler implementation would be done by the diagnostic unit, whose lab and clinical geneticists and the, the cancer, uh, cancer center, including surgery and oncology. And this is project that just has just started, but I was really happy to, to listen to, to the presentations last time by the Estonian uh, uh, colleagues who demonstrated that in Estonia, a similar project has, wide, has, has received wide acceptance by, by the public and, and by the healthcare professionals. So we are following the same steps. Uh, to conclude, uh, I want to say that, that uh, in, in my opinion, uh, biobanking and, and biobanking in the healthcare setting is a prerequisite for transition to, to personalized medicine. Uh, it is not easily implemented in the healthcare, but, but with appropriate legislation, uh, with uh, the help of, of different levels of healthcare professionals and, and by, by, uh, by keeping the public trust, it is possible. Thank you for your attention.